Hello and welcome to another video blog from home and today on A Vogel Talks Menopause I'm going to be talking about how to help to balance your hormones naturally during the perimenopause. If you like my tips and advice then please subscribe and remember to hit the bell icon so you can be notified of all my new videos. The perimenopause is the phase before the menopause itself and that's when, when your periods stop for good. It can be a very confusing time for most women because as the hormones change, symptoms can come and go. A lot of women don't know where they are one month from the next. So I thought today that I would go very briefly, very simply over what happens with your estrogen and progesterone levels. And hopefully we can then look at ways in which you can balance these hormones naturally. When you start the perimenopause, progesterone and oestrogen start to decrease very slowly over a number of years. The problem for most women is that progesterone for most of them tends to dip very gently, but oestrogen can go up and down like a yo-yo. Um, our bodies don't like being without oestrogen and very often as it starts to fall, our body can try and compensate and that can um, give a big um, hit of oestrogen some months and then some months oestrogen starts to fall. So you've got your progesterone falling nice and gently and your oestrogen going up and down quite a lot. When oestrogen falls, that tends to cause missing periods or your periods get further apart or they get very lighter or they get shorter. When you get a sudden hit of oestrogen, that can trigger periods back and, and some women find they can maybe go six months or more without a period and suddenly find they, they come back again. When the oestrogen gets high again, that, as I said, can trigger your periods. It can trigger all the usual PMS symptoms as well. So you could end up experiencing breast tenderness, moodiness, um, bloating. Sometimes it can rise enough to give you PMS symptoms but it doesn't actually trigger a period. So if you've got your oestrogen fluctuating like this over a number of years, it can be very hard on the body. It can be very hard on you, as I say, because you, you don't really know where you're coming from on a, a monthly basis. So one of the things you can do is try and boost your oestrogen levels, try and gently level them out so that you're not getting this spiking and, and, and decreasing on, on a regular basis. So these are the things that you can do to help yourself naturally. You can look at oestrogen rich foods. Um, I have done a video blog on this, so if you want to know more, please click the link. So these would be foods that you would have on a regular basis in your diet, so your body can make use of, of these natural oestrogens from the food that you are eating. If your periods are starting to tail off or get further apart or get lighter, you could look at our menopause support. This contains soya in a fermented form, if your periods are still regular or you find they're coming closer together or they're getting a bit heavier, you could look at the herb Agnes Castus. Look at your stress levels because stress can really impact on hormonal balance very, very quickly. And, you know, in this day and age, we're all very, very stressed. So it may be necessary to go with some kind of stress remedy and remember to take your magnesium on a daily basis too, because that's great for so many things in, in the menopause. Look at liver function. It, it's really interesting in that the liver is also involved in um, deactivating hormones and it can cause a problem if your liver is a little bit stressed. You could look at herbs like um, milk thistle, peppermint, artichoke, these and dandelion, these herbs are all known to improve liver function. And I do recommend once every six months during the perimenopause and menopause to do a little bit of liver support work because it can make a huge difference both to physical and emotional symptoms. Look at exercise as well. It's really important that we keep ourselves fit in the perimenopause 
and regular exercise, even if it's just a 15 minute brisk walk a day, can make a huge amount for our general well-being. The other really interesting thing here is that there's a lot of research coming out looking about how our friendly bacteria can also play a big part in hormonal balance. I have also done a video blog about this and I've just remembered I've also done another video blog about the liver so if you want more details on all these ones please do um, click on the links. The level of friendly bacteria in your digestive tract can help if they're in good uh, good condition can help to extract the phytoestrogens from your food so this ties in in with number one if you have a, a good diet with lots of phytoestrogen rich foods then you need plenty of good friendly bacteria in the digestive tract to extract them so you can make good use of them so if you have digestive problems if you tend to have bloating if you tend to have a bit of constipation if you've had antibiotics even a number of years ago all of these can affect the level of friendly bacteria and that can also impact on your hormonal balance as well so i hope you found this one interesting it's just a few little simple tips that you can do on a regular basis can have quite a big impact on your hormonal balance during the perimenopause and that can help you to cope with all these major changes that are going on. Any of you have got any great tips out there, things that you have found have really helped your hormones during the perimenopause? We would love to hear them, so please share. And until then, I will see you next week for another edition of A Vogel Talks Menopause.